Good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer, right one, for the fifth Thursday in Lent. On behalf of Father Mark, the vestry and staff of St. John's, I invite you to take part in this service by following along in the order of service attached to this post or on our website just above this video. Thank you. I will arise and go to my Father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy Son. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But now, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults, Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and thou shalt show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the Oh, how good and pleasant. 
pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now if the ministry of death, chiseled in letters on stone tablets, came in glory so that the people of Israel could not gaze at Moses' face because of the glory of his face, a glory now set aside, how much more will the ministry of the Spirit come in glory? For if there was glory in the mystery of condemn, ministry of condemnation, much more does the ministry of justification abound in glory. Indeed, what once had glory has lost its glory because of the greater glory. For if that what was set aside came through glory, much more has the permanent come in glory. Since then we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image, from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the Gospel of Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house, or brothers, or sisters, or mother, or father, or children, or fields, for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Here I am. 
write any prayers, intercessions, or thanksgivings, either spoken aloud or in the silence of our hearts. We pray this morning for all those on our parish prayer list, for all those suffering in mind, body, and spirit, and for all those who have asked about our prayers. We pray for all those who have died, that their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God may rest in peace. We pray for all those who are suffering from any violence, persecution, or warfare throughout the world. We pray for all those suffering from the coronavirus and their families. We give thanks this morning for the many blessings we enjoy in this life, and for the life and ministry of this parish church of St. John's, and especially for the ministry of Courtney Callahan, our Director of Children's Ministry and Outreach. And we give thanks for all the doctors, nurses, and medical professionals who are serving our communities, caring for all those who may be sick or scared. And we lift up to you all those thoughts and prayers that are on our hearts, minds, and spirits, for which we don't have the words. That in raising them to you, you may work through them in our lives as you see fit, always furthering our call to be your hands and feet of grace, truth, and love in this world. Amen. Now gathering up these prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings, we say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee the most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee, in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I love praying the daily office. Most of my days are marked by a specific rhythm. 9 a.m. morning prayer, 12.15 p.m. noonday prayer, 5 p.m. evening prayer, and then sometimes if I'm feeling a little, little excited, complex. These services, the daily office as they're known, are the moments of prayer in my day that mark my journey from morning to evening. From the start of a new day to its closing, my daily beginning and nightly ending. 
I really need these simple services of scripture and prayer because they engage me in acts of personal, faithful devotion that I need to be reminded of. The first part of the office that we say together is the confession. We begin our day together as faithful Episcopalians, confessing our faults to one another and to God. It is our way of naming before God where we fall short, and then we offer that to Him. We can't expect God to forgive us if we don't ask for that forgiveness, apologize for our shortcomings ourselves. I need to be reminded of that generally three times a day. Then we hear the scripture, we pray the psalms together, we say or sing the canticles as one, and we hear the story of the work of God and Christ in scripture. We hear these stories again and again. I need these stories because I need to know time and time again each day the saving work of God in the scriptural narrative, and then pray on where God is doing the same, where God is acting in my life. Finally, after we say the Lord's Prayer, our intercessions to God, and we offer our prayers and thanksgivings, we say the general thanksgiving. And this, this is the most important part. We must always give thanks to God for the many, many ways God is working in our lives and through us. All of who we are and where we come from are of God. We give thanks for God's many graces in our lives, even when they may seem small, because God is always doing infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. God is good all the time, my friends. We simply need to give ourselves the space to see him and say thank you. We bless and give thanks to thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy will that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.